Hello everyone, welcome to Raw Online. I am Dr. Rabi Naya, I am a consultant pediatrician. So in Nelson based pediatric teaching in the chapter of respiratory system, the next topic of discussion is on paranemonic effusion and empyema. This is going to be a very short and a very brief uh, presentation. So in this I will take you through, so what are the presentations, so how does the paranemonic effusion presence, so what is a simple PPE, what is empyema, the clinical features, when do you actually suspect that there is some effusion happening on inside the child's uh, system and how do you investigate, how do you go about the treatment. So, we will start with the introduction. So, mostly whenever there is a pneumonia in a child, we always observe that there is a, some amount of a minimal pleural effusion, isn't it? Some amount of effusion will be there because of transudation, because of the inflammation that is going on in the parenchymal space, there is some amount of inflammation in the pleural space also. So, the effusion which happens in the pleural space is a very common complication in pneumonia and uh, these are uh, paranemonic effusions. So, major proportion of childhood pleural effusions there will be PPEs. So, what is a simple paranemonic effusion? So, paranemonic effusion we can abbreviate as PPE. So, what is a simple PPE? So, whenever there is a lung parenchymal infection, the infection will spread, the inflammation will spread from the parenchyma to the pleura causing a minimal pleural effusion. So, that is a simple paranemonic effusion. So, when you treat the pneumonia with adequate antibiotics at the right time with good sensitivity, then this will be controlled. This effusion will not progress, right. But when you give a treatment which is not appropriate and which is not adequate, the infection is caused by a very virulent organism and that is when this infective process from the parenchyma which has gone into the pleura is going to progress in the pleura as well and that is going to cause a complicated paranemonic effusion giving all the uh, systemic features that we are going to see in a moment. And what is this empyema? So, we are talking about uh, effusions, right? But what is an empyema? Empyema is pus, isn't it? So, when there is a pus collection in a body cavity, we call it as empyema. Empyema thoracis means the pus is collected in the pleural cavity. So, this is like a continuum. So, what starts as a simple paranemonic effusion from the beginning because of the lung parenchymal inflammation spreading to the pleura, so that is a simple PPE. When you give, when you hit the organism with the right antibiotics at the right time and the right dose, this is going to halt here. But when this progresses, because it may be because of a very, very virulent organism or because the antibiotic is not sensitive, this is going to progress into a complicated paranemonic effusion where the child is starting to have all the systemic features. It is going to spread, the effusion is going to uh, continue and this can go and get collected. The effusion is going to get converted as a pus, pus collection. So, that is when empyema thoracis develops. So, you can think that this is like a continuum of the same disease uh, spectrum, right. So, coming to the risk factors. So, some of which we have already seen, okay, one is pneumonia. Whenever there is a pneumonia because of a virulent organism or because the host defense is impaired, or when we do not uh, start the medical treatment at the right time, these are all some of the risk factors. Per se, the host related risk factor will be a malnourished child, a child who has not received immunizations for pneumococcal, for Hib. These are the children who will progress to uh, um, complicated paranemonic effusions and an immunocompromised state because of a measles, like a post measles state. So, that will predispose and uh, infection with, of course, antibiotic resistant organisms. So, so far I think it is a very simple uh, discussion. So, coming to the epidemiology. So, epidemiology mostly we see children between 3 to 6 years and slightly there is an increased uh, prevalence among boys more than girls. In India, most of the children we see with pleural effusion or these children less than 5 years of age because it is very obvious pneumonia happens under 5, most of the children under 5. So, these are the children who are admitted with uh, paranemonic effusions as well. So, coming to the etiologic agents, so those organisms which cause pneumonia are going to predispose to uh, effusions as well, isn't it? So, the common infective agents will be start from your pneumococcal, so streptococcus pneumoniae. It can be because of staph aureus, especially the community acquired MRSA, right? So, when there is a community acquired MRSA, it produces the pantan valentine toxin. So, that predisposes to PPEs, haemophilus influenza. These are com common organisms. So, other organisms, it can be because of group A streptococcus, it can be because of corns and it can be because of the rare 
species like actinomyces fungal anaerobes etc okay and in immunocompromised children it can be because of pneumocystitis gyrovechi as well so what are the rare causes viral pneumonia can also predispose to um, paranemonic effusions even because of mycoplasma there can be paranemonic effusions of course we are going to talk about the pleural fluid cytology pleural fluid uh, gram staining and culture where we will be able to identify or isolate the organism and very very important in india we cannot uh, forget we should not dispense uh, uh, talking about uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis isn't it so pleural effusion definitely whenever we do the pleural fluid sampling we should always write afb smear okay so pleural effusions can also occur due to mycobacterium tuberculosis and uh, these uh, viral infections which cause um, pleural effusions are mostly asymptomatic and they resolve without therapy those which are caused by community acquired mrsa or the streptococci are the ones which will be very very resistant for treatment and they advance quite quickly also so uh, you all pretty much know about the uh, physiology of the pleural space basically it is a small anatomical space with a very small amount of fluid okay so whatever is getting uh, filtered by the parietal pleura will be absorbed by the visceral pleura so whenever there is so much of inflammation that is happening there is increased transudation okay so this space is so small when there is inflammation from the lung parenchyma so much of transudation is happening so this space expands the filtration is not adequate so when there is increased hydrostatic pressure in this area there is uh, resultant will be the pleural effusion the fluid starts getting accumulated so the lymphatic system is unable and uh, to filter everything so that will lead to the development of pleural effusion so these are all some of the images of uh, pleural the vats uh, video assisted thoracoscopy images of the pleural effusion so we are going to talk about the phases or the stages of progression in a, a paranemonic effusion so that will follow a cascade of events so first will be a exudative phase okay so because of the inflammation the exudate happens so that is an exudative phase next there is a fibrino purulent phase purulent by the term we know it is going to be pus um, collection and the last phase will be the organizing phase so we will start seeing what is the pathophysiology behind the uh, starting from the simple effusion that is the first stage so in the simple exudative phase this is where it it all starts okay so when the treatment is not uh, appropriate at this stage it progresses okay so what happens when you uh, do a pleural fluid analysis at this stage so in an uncomplicated paranemonic effusion this is a uh, this is an exudative phase here it is only the exudation but there is no um, organism growth okay so it is not infected the pleural space is not infected all the exudation is from the lung parenchyma so this usually lasts in the first 2 to 3 days of the pneumonic uh, pneumonia episode okay so what happens when you do the pleural fluid analysis so this is the usual finding okay this is the usual finding in a simple effusion so first we always look at the ph ph is normal normal in the sense ph less than 7.2 indicates that there is an infection so it's this ph coming to the cytology coming to the other biochemical parameters ph is very very sensitive okay so when you look at the ph at this stage it will be more than 7.2 which is normal next you do the sugar so the glucose uh, is going to be normal which is more than 2.2 millimoles per liter if you do a gram stain and culture there are no organisms and pleural fluid ldh is less than 1000 international units per liter so you should remember this these findings if you get these findings then it is only a simple paranemonic effusion it is not yet infected